Last week I went to Ace of Diamonds Mine in upstate New York to go searching for Herkimer Diamonds. Herkimer Diamonds are not actually diamonds, I'm sorry to disappoint you, um, but they are still really beautiful crystals and they're made out of quartz. The reason that they may be mistaken for diamonds is because of their shape. They have this really clear cut, beautiful shape to them and they're also really well known for being double terminated, meaning they have these two ends that are both pointy. They grew this way because of the crystal structure of quartz. It's the hexagonal crystal system. So when it crystallizes, these ones crystallize very, very, very slowly over a really long time, making them very clear like this and giving them this beautiful clear cut shape. I just realized I was looking at this poster again and I realized that there's a little drawing of what Herkimer diamonds look like on it. It's a little um, double terminated crystal hexagonal crystal. And they're also really well known for being super clear and beautiful, much like diamonds are, but they're different from diamonds obviously because they're a different mineral, but also they aren't cut like this, like diamonds are. They grow like this in the rock, which is pretty cool. Herkimer diamonds are not only found in Herkimer, New York. They can be found in other places like Pakistan, Hungary, France, Italy, Canada, and other places on the, on the earth, on the earth, on the planet, <laughs> but they're called Herkimer diamonds, I believe, because that might be the first place that people became well aware of them and that's kind of where they got their name. They have also been called Little Falls diamonds and Middleville diamonds because those are other places nearby near Herkimer where they can also be found. Diamonds are made out of carbon while quartz is made out of silica. Silica is a material that is made out of the two elements silicon and oxygen, which are the two most abundant um, elements in the Earth's crust. Silica is actually the major ingredient of magma. So a little bit about Herkimer diamonds and how they form. The rock that Herkimer diamonds crystallized in, the host rock, is dolomite or dolostone, and the specific form rock formation name is the Little Falls dolostone. Dolomite is very similar to limestone. It actually started out as limestone until it went under chemical process that turned it into dolomite. The difference between limestone and dolomite is limestone is made out of mainly calcite, which I do not have my calcite with me. Oh, I do, it's over here. And this is what calcite looks like in a sample. This is um, what you call optical calcite. And another calcium carbonate mineral is aragonite, which is actually the same exact mineral formula as calcite, but it's um, a polymorph of calcite. They have, they're different minerals because they have different crystal structures, but they have the same chemical composition. Anyway, this is the type of mineral that limestone is made out of. And when it goes under the process of dolomitization, which is turning limestone into dolomite, this is the introduction of magnesium to the rock. So then it becomes calcium magnesium carbonate instead of calcium carbonate. Okay, I'm sorry, that is enough chemistry for today. But essentially, that's the main difference between limestone and dolostone. So that's the rock that these beautiful Herkimer diamonds crystallize in. So this specific rock, the Little Falls dolostone, was formed starting 500 million years ago. At this time, the continents on our planet were at very different locations, and there was a shallow sea where upstate New York currently is located. And in this shallow sea, there was a bunch of calcium, calcium carbonate material being deposited at the bottom. And calcium carbonate is the material that most seashells and other sea creatures are made out of. So when they die and fall to the surface, and when they drop their shells to the surface and all that kind of stuff, this eventually gets compacted into rock and turns into limestone. Eventually, this specific limestone was turned into dolomite, probably by being introduced to a bunch of um, magnesium-rich groundwater. Back when this was happening, when these sediments were being deposited at the bottom of that shallow sea, the life on Earth was much different, obviously, than today. It's a pretty long time ago. Um, the Cambrian Age is actually well known for being the Cambrian Explosion, and this is when life on Earth started to really blossom. There was life on Earth before this, but it wasn't what we necessarily think of when we think of life. It was just tiny little living things like bacteria and single-celled organisms. And the Cambrian is when things started to really, you know, 
evolve. <laughs> this is where we saw like the first fish and a lot of sea life. Most, most life on earth at this time was sea life. There wasn't really much going on at land in on land yet. So I have my backpack from when I went searching for these crystals and I'm going to show you a few of the rocks that I picked up. <laughs> this backpack was very heavy to carry back with me, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like this is like the Mary Poppins bag where I just keep pulling stuff out of it. Okay, so this is a piece of the Dolo stone that I picked up, the Dolomite. And you can see that there's all these pockets in here, and these are called Vugs. This is another example of a Vug. You can see, if I move this around, you can see the, the tiny little crystals inside the hole. So these are Vugs, and you can see there's not only quartz in here, you can see these more, these whiter minerals. I think these are calcite. They look like calcite to me, but I know that this rock is dolomite, which is made up of a bunch of dolomite, tiny little dolomite crystals. Um, but this looks pretty much the same as calcite. I actually have another... This I got from Field Camp in Wyoming from a different um, rock formation. This is from a dolomite rock formation. I'm pretty sure it's calcite though, the crystals. I'm not gonna lie to you, they look the same to me. So when you look at these pockets, they weren't always filled in with these crystals. First when the, the dolomite had to form first, like I said, and then it began to weather away and these little empty spaces, these little holes began to form in the rock as water moved through there and maybe started dissolving the rock um, slowly. And as the water left again, it left behind all these little elements in there and those elements crystallized into minerals. So depending on what elements were left behind from that groundwater and how they interacted with the host rock, these minerals formed. And the two major minerals I saw when I was there collecting stuff was the calcite or the dolomite crystals along with Herkimer diamonds mixed in. I really like the ones where you can see both in there. Can you, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> and you can also see some other empty spaces in here, these other small bugs. Those didn't have crystals form in them yet. This is another bug with mostly quartz. So yeah, that's how the Herkimer diamonds get in there. They didn't just pop up one day. It took a long time for them to crystallize. So when I went to go out. So when I went on my little road trip, I, wow, that sounded British for a second. <laughs> Little, my little road trip. I'm not gonna do that again. Oh, I'm about two and a half hours away from Herkimer, from the mine I went to. I got to the mine at around noon. I went in and I parked and I started out at the bottom of the hill and I went through the rubble there. So right by the parking lot, there's a big pile of rubble, which is just a bunch of broken up rocks and dirt that you can sort through. It had rained like two days before that. So I was hoping that I would have some luck with finding crystals on the surface. Um, when I first got there, I didn't really find anything. I broke open some rocks. Thank you so much. I can't believe I did that. It was still in the machine, so. Oh my god. But I wasn't really having much luck, and I'm gonna be honest, it was really, really tiring. And I just was feeling kind of lazy, so I kind of stuck to just digging through the dirt and just sitting there and staring, trying to find a little glint of a crystal somewhere to dig up. I think I see one right here. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, look at it. Wow. That's the first one I found today. At this point, I also found a lot of rocks with these um, dolomite crystals in them or calcite. I think that they're calcite crystals, but they might actually technically be 
dolomite crystals, obviously, because the rock is dolomite. Um, they're essentially the same mineral, and I think the only way I'd be able to tell is if I had um, acid, which I would drop on here and see if it fizzes. If it was calcite, if it was pure calcite like this, it would fizz. It would react with that hydrochloric acid. Um, but dolomite doesn't react as strongly, so that would be how I would know. Um, but they, it has the same cleavage as calcite, and it looks pretty much the same. So I'm not sure, but either way, these crystals were here. I found a lot of them. I decided to also try out the panning, which is when you dig um, from this other pile and you put it in this sieve, there's like two layers of it, and you dump it in the water, you dunk it in there and shake it. And then you dump it on a table and you try to sort through it and find crystals, but I got pretty bored with that really quickly and I, I felt like it was more fun to look through the dirt and the loose rocks. So I just went back to doing that. And then I drove up the hill to the other huge pile of rocks. I feel like my car is not made to go up hills like this. But we're doing it. There's lots of piles up here and a campsite. And I had such better luck up there. I found so many crystals. I found most of the crystals there all just on the surface, just from walking around and, you know, turning rocks over, being scared half to death by spiders that crawl out from under them. It's such an exciting feeling when you're walking and you're, you see like a lot of shininess and sparkliness when you're walking because dolomite is actually sparkly when it's in the sun already. Um, and there's also just a lot of the holes filled in with tiny, tiny, tiny little druzy quartz. So there's a lot of that. And when you're walking, you just constantly see all these sparkles out of the corner of your eye and you think that it's gonna be an actual Herkimer diamond, but most of the time it isn't. So it's just so satisfying when you when you're like, oh, I really think that's a crystal, and then you go and you look closer and you see it poking out of the dirt. It is the best feeling when you're like about to move and you see a little glint of something and it ends up being a crystal. been finding a lot up here. Oh my god, another one. Huh, that one's not as terminated, but it's still really pretty. I don't know if I want to keep that one. Sorry. I wonder if this is what people must feel when they go fishing. I feel like it's a lot more interesting than fishing. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some of the crystals that I did find. I found, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I found like 12 crystals, but they all weren't these beautiful, perfectly terminated crystals. I think only like two or three of them are double terminated, like Herkimer crystals are known for. Wow, I cannot speak right now. And I still have to clean off some of them because they're still partially covered in dirt. I don't know if you can see that. It's not focusing. But they're really pretty and I'm going to look at them later with my hand lens and see if I can see any fluid inclusions in there. That's another thing I really like about Herkimer diamonds is that they can have these fluid inclusions in them and they can either be salt water or even petroleum and sometimes they can have carbon dioxide in them and you see them as these little bubbles in the crystal. Sometimes there can also be inclusions of other minerals like pyrite or maybe even like another Herkimer crystal inside of that one, like kind of engulfed. Fluid inclusions are really cool because you can study a fluid inclusion in a mineral 
and figure out exactly what the conditions were in the rock when that fluid inclusion was engulfed into the crystal. Another interesting thing when you go Herkimer diamond hunting is that you're gonna see that the crystals all don't have the same shape to them. At first, I think people used to think that Herkimer diamonds were all the same exact crystal shape or crystal habit, but hexagonal crystal systems give a, a little bit of room to what the crystals actually end up looking like, and they can have slightly variegated um, shapes. So when they grow, they look very similar, but they can have different um, like amounts of sides and different shapes of sides. Uh, it's just really cool. There's nice little uniqueness. It's kind of like snowflakes. So that's it. That was my little adventure to Ace of Diamonds Mine in upstate New York. I'm pretty happy with my rock and crystal haul. I mean, I'm a geologist, so I think sometimes even these ugly rocks are more exciting to me than maybe a normal person. But obviously the shiny ones are really fun too, and I'm glad I found at least some of them. So I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.